Hey, what's up? This just will be a short video. Uh, yesterday I got my guitar I've been talking about and uh, I was excited but also disappointed to some degree because the wiring was all fucked up. So I spent all morning, I'm basically late to work, rewiring my guitar and I'm missing a capacitor that I'm gonna have to buy off the internet for $10. Uh, I don't know what the fuck they had done to it. Uh, I guess I'll post. I was being a damn loser and uh, doing a box opening video, and then I watched it back. It just looked stupid and ridiculous. I'm fucking in my mid 30s opening a box like a little kid. So I'm not posting that bullshit. But I will post uh, what my first reaction was when I opened my guitar, and it was fucking not. I don't know, it was pretty funny. And basically the reason why I'm posting it is because there's like no information on this guitar brand online. I have only found two videos and they're not the model I've got. But uh, after I get my capacitor wired up, I'll post the video so you can actually see what the guitar sounds like. I mean, maybe, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, I guess I'm just gonna brag about myself today. Yesterday I was on, I had to go to this school play and um, I was bored at a certain point and was scrolling through YouTube and found a number of different people with my song on their playlist on YouTube. And I was pretty, uh, I don't know what to say. I, I, it was, it was heartwarming after all the fucking work I've been putting into what I've been doing for years and years and years and basically uh, being ignored by people in positions that could help me get better press. But uh, any musician knows that's went and tried to get write-ups even before Submit Hub existed. I was getting, I was trying to get written up before uh, Submit Hub existed. So you had to literally get like a whole email shit together uh, sounds like it was even worse for people in the 90s. They had to send videotapes and never knew if they ever got a response. But uh, you would just send out all these emails to people who just didn't look at your email, basically. And they didn't realize what they were passing up. I understand in some cases, well, hell, I don't even know. You know, sometimes the people that know how to write the good email to get written don't know how to write the good song and vice versa. I'm terrible at PR. I don't know how to do that shit. I'm only good at being myself, and the second it turns into be a phony piece of shit to get attention, I'm not really that good at it, because it's not a normal thing for anyone to do, and I didn't really become an artist to be a fucking clown. I am a clown, but not, not in the way I'm talking about. Not in the Billy Eyelash way. Just kidding. Uh, that'll get me a lot of people hating me. The only reason why I say that is because she's corporately funded. She did not make it on her own like a lot of us real artists out here did. She had her brother writing all of her music. And then uh, somehow they got some record deal probably because she was a young girl. And the record label was looking for young girls playing electronic music. And you can just get signed. What happens, and I found some forums about this, is uh, the record labels get something in their head. And think, oh, we can market this really well. When I was reading this, this was like in the late 2018 era, and they were looking for emo acoustic acts or something like that. Like girls who were like playing their acoustic guitar, but were emo. <laughs> and so if you were, if you fit the description, you could get signed no matter what, because they were just going to produce you. It didn't matter if you were good or not. It'd almost be better if you didn't know what was going on so that they could just use you like a product. And so artists like us who are actually part of the real culture of our city and society and of America because we're really I'm actually part of American culture um, the shows I play the things I do the things I say they're an honest they're an honest situation they are what is happening I'm not here to be part of a scene in fact I make my own and uh, like millions of trailblazing artists before me it's a hard mountain to climb with insults on the way up and uh, derision, anxiety, anger towards your new ideas. And then after all that, they steal your ideas. You don't get the credit for what you created. And so a lot of that kept me underground on purpose because I didn't want some fucking loser uh, 
taking my idea and saying it was his. I've kept a lot of my concepts in the underground on purpose. Because what I do is not a trend. And basically the people that follow me, if there are any, uh, it's because they are looking for things that aren't out there. But it was heartwarming because, uh, you know, all, all of my marketing things have been failures, basically. I've wasted a lot of money spending ads and magazines for a tour I had in New York, and I tried the Facebook AdSense shit because I was watching some YouTube PR videos of this, uh, I think, British PR firm of a guy and a girl. They seemed pretty honest. And uh, they had a lot of ideas that they had applied in the real world, so I started trying some of them. And I kept some of their ideas in the back of my head, even though none of them have really worked out for me. The only thing that's really gotten me more fans is playing shows, because I am an electric performer, basically. No one performs like me. I'm the best at what I do. And um, <clears throat> probably the best in the fucking world. But uh, I'll find that out when I'm able to go to Europe if they'll have me. Hopefully the punk scene can find me, Europe. Come find me, motherfuckers. But like, uh, it was really, uh, it was really amazing because I'd go, uh, I searched my name up and then, uh, playlists were coming up and, uh, one of the playlists were titled Important, uh, Music Mix, all these types of things. And then I saw the stuff that my uh, fans were listening to because uh, Spotify won't tell me. They're hiding that data from me. Um, so is YouTube. They won't tell me what associated artists I go together with. Even though I'm verified on Google and all this other shit, there's, there's, a, there's a block against me because I'm anti what they stand for. And uh, a lot of people were listening to the OCs one character found me through Forever Mitty, who made my very first video, and it was my first viral video. I think it was up to like 2,000 views now. It was like late, uh, it was before YouTube turned, well, you were still able to talk through YouTube through a messaging system and respond to other people's videos with your video. So, and then uh, YouTube stopped all that because that was a little bit too... Uh, community based and then they turned it into the mass media but uh, before all that happened I ran into someone from Italy online who agreed to make a music video for me and uh, it's uh, really good it's like a turn of the it's late vaporwave aesthetic but I and uh, I was heavily influenced by Ariel Pink during this time and uh, but I play all my own instruments so that's where the Ariel Pink element comes in I was into Ariel Pink uh, because of the punk aspect. Uh, he has DIY aesthetic. He did what he had and made it look cool. And so that it's more about how cool it was as opposed to how much money you spend on it. Now he's signed, or he has been signed to 4AD and then he was on a label that kicked him off because of uh, him going to a Trump rally. So Mexican Summer, I'll never be on your label as I blow up. You can never touch me. I don't agree with people who don't understand what's going on politically. So if you don't really understand politics, then you don't have the right to take people off your label because because you don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, I've uh, I met uh, our Stevie Moore before. I have a music video that I put him in. I saw him at a basement show in uh, Murfreesboro. Uh, for a while I was talking to him on uh, Twitter and then, uh, I can't, now as I look back, I think I know what happened. I looked back to go see where he was at one day on Twitter, and I was blocked from him. I was like, what the fuck? And uh, I remember a year or two ago, he wrote the N-word on his Twitter. And I thought, oh my god, he's taking a stand against censorship, is what I thought. Not that, oh, this old white guy's racist. That's not the case at all. I talked to him personally. There's, he's not racist at all. He was wearing a fucking uh, Nirvana hat. You, you know, you're not a Nirvana fan and then believe in racism. That doesn't even fucking go together. Uh, he's, he's an underground champion and basically in, uh, a big inspiration. Like, Ariel Pink went and found him. 
And uh, when I got to meet our Stevie Moore, uh, no one knew who the fuck he was. I got a group of kids to come see him at this basement. Uh, uh, they were a bunch of Tennessee hipsters. I just come from Lawrence, Kansas. That's basically where I'm, where I made my my scene happen. And uh, nobody knew what was going on. I told my friend, oh, "We got to go see this guy's a legend." Basically, I don't think he, I don't even know if he knew that he was a legend. And uh, I walk into the living room, and there he is, just sitting there wearing his Nirvana hat. He had just got off tour with Ariel Pink in Europe. And uh, I just sheepishly walked. I was wearing a huge wide brim cowboy straw hat with bright purple jeans and who knows what kind of a shirt, it doesn't matter. And so I stood out like a sore thumb because I'm cooler than everyone else. Uh, everyone else just looked like the standard indie hipster that you would come to expect. And they're all conformists. So uh, I sheepish, well first I go over and there's an older man there, maybe in his 40s or 50s, and I'm sitting here thinking, what's this guy doing? And so I go and talk to him and he's like, oh, I've been a fan of our Stevie Moore since the early 80s when he very first started putting out tapes. And I was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't even know that. Uh, I, my first introduction to our Stevie Moore, uh, I just found him randomly on YouTube in 2008. Someone had created an Auto Sam account, is what it's called, Auto Sam, and it might have been one of the young kids he hung out with. But uh, I found some video he had just made where he was gray and he's wearing. He was at the sports track or the race track, and he had a fucking checkered shirt on, like a flag that you would wave during racing and he's got a tape player and he's like walking around some NASCAR event making a music video looking like a crazy old codger while everyone's kind of walking by him and, and going to the NASCAR <laughs> and it's so it was so cool you know what I mean I was like oh this is sick and basically as a young man who doesn't really understand where his career is going after uh after I decided to go off onto my uh solo career it was extremely inspirational and I thought oh my god this is me this is me this is my future this is what I'm going to do when I get older I'm going to take my I'm going to find some young kid who smokes weed <laughs> just kidding I'm going to go find some young kid uh, who's crazy enough to come videotape my old codger ass running around at some public event making an ass out of myself <laughs> and then the very next video I found of his uh, was I want to stay home, and uh, it's absolutely it's his it's a, his smells like Teen Spirit basically. He's playing a, I think it might be a, a New Jersey cable access show, uh, and he's got a fake drummer wearing a elephant nose, and the whole and he's got a toy fake guitar in his pocket that he pretends to pull out of his pocket and play, and the whole thing was very very uh, fuck you. Uh, in, in a way that I needed to see because I had just our, my, my three piece band had just broken up and uh, it was very fucking depressing and I didn't know how to start my career as an electronic musician, is that what I am right now and so uh, I started uh, I started going under the name Tired League and some of my best albums if you go look up Bandcamp Tired League you'll see my first noise album I came out with uh, you'll see uh you'll see an album that no one's ever heard that's fucking amazing and it's basically me teaching myself how to record by myself with a Casio drum machine and I had to look to people like R. Stevie Moore and Wesley Willis who I got to see on his last tour uh, to gain inspiration into the world that I was going in because I didn't like electronic music I didn't like I didn't know who Fat Gadget was yet I didn't understand there was a whole group of uh, characters in Europe who uh, attacked electronic music in a way that I attacked rock and roll. And really, I never let go of rock and roll. I just recorded a brand new fucking song last night that is basically one of the best songs I've ever done. But, um, I don't know what to say. The end of this. <laughs>